Look at the, the kill. It's crazy. I think it will still be good for harvest. Do you have that? <laughs> That's winter farming, folks. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to the Caterpillar tunnels. We have 10 on the farm here, and we still have some crops in them, and we'll go and see if the crops are still alive. We had some pretty cold temperatures this week, so we'll see if uh, we still have something harvestable. And we had our first big snowstorm of the season. We got about a feet of snow in one night. So the fields are all covered now, but the caterpillar tunnels still have uh, crops in them. So we'll go and see what's up with that. Cool, and do you not normally rely on the caterpillar tunnels? You have the other cold tunnels, is that right? Yes, yeah, so the caterpillar tunnels are only used for season extension, so we cannot grow in them all winter long because they cannot withstand a lot of snow on them. But we grow in them until December and then we close them off for the winter. And we move on to our cold tunnels and also our greenhouses. I see. But is it possible to grow in them if you wanted to just do multiple layers of mini tunnels inside them? I think so, but they are not really isolated, so it would be hard to grow in them all winter long. It depends on how cold your winter gets, but I guess in milder climates you could grow in them all winter long for sure. Gotcha. Also, you, you have to shovel the snow around them, otherwise they, they will uh, collapse. <laughs> <laughs> So we got a feet of snow kind of unexpectedly, so we didn't know we, would, we were going to have this much snow. And the problem is with these tunnels, they cannot hold a lot of snow on them. And what you see is starting to collapse, so we need to get that snow out of the plastic. And then we need to secure the tunnel like we did with these two. So you need to bring the plastic up and secure it with a rope, and then it's good for the winter. But this is not good because the risk is that the, the risk is that the structure will fold on itself because of the snow load. So we need to remove all the snow, bring the plastic up and secure it with ropes uh, as soon as possible because we risk losing this structure if we don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's intense, right? Time to get moving. <laughs> yeah. Would it be better if it was a gothic shape? I think so. I think the gothic shape uh, caterpillar tunnels gets the snow going down on the sides, but this one holds all the snow on it, so it's not good for Win uh, winter growing all winter long. So you can do season extension in it, but not grow uh, for the whole season. Look at the, the kill. It's crazy. We see all the snow we receive. I think it will still be good for harvest. We'll see. It's supposed to be uh, pretty hot this weekend, so we'll see if it uh, unfreezes. It just looks like a field of snowballs. It's crazy. That's so cool. warmer in here. Yeah. So we just got inside the caterpillar tunnels and we can feel a few degrees more warmth in here. And we'll see if these Hakurai turnips are still good for harvest. I seeded them in October 
and just protect them with uh, row covers. Actually, this is not the best setup you could do. I would recommend putting the row cover on some wires because you don't want this cover to touch the leaves because when it frosts, it can create frost damage on the leaves. But then we'll see if these are still good. So yeah, they're nice. So they're still a bit small. I've seeded them maybe one week too late. So they didn't have enough light to grow to their full size, but they're still harvestable. And we had really cold temperatures here in Quebec um, in the last few weeks. But what we see is that even though you have cold temperatures, you can still harvest um, in cataplotinols until December. And you said that light was the limiting factor, is that right? Could you talk about that? In Quebec, light decreases really fast in the fall. Um, when we get to November 15 or so, uh, there's not a lot of light, like the plant growth will be really slow. So what we do is that we need to have plant growth before November 15. And when we hit that mark, our vegetables need to be almost ready to be harvested. So now, right now we are um, at the first week of December and these are a bit too small to be harvested. So that means that our seeding date was one week too late. So we need to seed a little bit earlier so that the vegetables are um, harvestable when the light decreases too much. Cool. So I know this is the, the, the lowest tech thing you do and it's not the one you rely on for no. your winter veggies. So you wanna take us to the next level up? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this cataplotinols is really like um, a way to have more vegetables, but we don't rely on these vegetables for our sales to our restaurant clients. Gotcha, but for sure if a, a home gardener or an even smaller market garden, you know, they could do something like this and sure they might not rely on it as much, but mm -hmm. they could probably get a bunch of veggies out of it most of the time. Yeah, yeah, really. You, you could definitely grow in these structures and have a really good harvest, but when you're a market gardener, you need to be sure that you'll be harvesting crops. You, and these are not a for sure thing, so we need a more reli reli reliable structures such as uh, minimally heated greenhouses and cold tunnels. All right, let's go see him. Yeah. By the way, how does it taste? It's really good. Can I try? Yeah. They're nice, right? Yeah, exactly. It's small, I didn't know they were that nice. I thought they were smaller than that. So just one week difference, really. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I have, uh, I could show you. I have two cold uh, tunnels. One, I transplanted spinach um let's say mid-october and the other one one week later and the one i transplanted one week later it didn't grow at all and the one i transplanted mid-october were harvesting on it for many weeks now so it really the window for the um, planting of the crop is really small you really have to get in there at the right date otherwise the light is too low and you don't get plant growth so let's go see those yeah. I'll show you. So why is food sovereignty so important to you? Um, that's a good question. I think um, the first reason why I started growing vegetables in the winter was not for food sovereignty really. It was more because it was a challenge. I really wanted to see if we were able to be harvesting vegetables 12 months of the year. So that was really my main motivation at first. And I think Jean-Martin's motivation too. But then when we started doing it, we saw how awesome it was to be uh, bringing to market vegetables every week out of the year. And the, I think the thing that I like the most about it is to see how with the seasons change, how much diversity we're able to grow on this farm. Because what we're growing this winter is really different from what we're growing in the summer. We're only growing vegetables that like the cold. 
And what we see uh, doing this for many years is that we can grow a really large diversity of crops. At first we were only growing uh, spinach, but now we're really growing 30 more crops in the winter. So it's, we're really amazed uh, by, by how much we can do in the winter and w doing it with a uh, greenhouse that are either not heated or minimally heated. Yeah, our, our customers really happy to be getting this fresh veggies yeah. in, in the winter? Yeah, and we started doing uh, CSA baskets in the winter, last winter, and I was a bit scared of how the customers would react to all the crops we're growing in the winter because they're pretty new. So most of these crops, uh, people never saw them. And what we found out is that customers are really excited by getting fresh food in the winter that is seasonal and local, and they're, they, they really want to try new things. Like we send out things like Komatsuna and Senposai and Dandelion, and they were not scared about it. They really wanted to try it. So we had some very good reaction to our uh, winter offer. And um, I just had a question. Yeah. Oh, we're back in the sun. Hold oh. on. I know it's good. It's good. Do you know some of the stats though of, of like how not sovereign are uh, food supplies in the winter? Uh, no, I don't know the stats by heart, unfortunately. Okay. But isn't it, I think it's safe to say that, you know, most people, even if they do eat local in the summer, for probably about half of the year, they can't really rely yeah. on local veggies. And that's kind of like a big blind spot in the, mm -hmm. in the whole local food idea. And I think it's so cool that here we're seeing an example of like really tackling that. If this was done by more people, far more people could continue to eat local veggies all winter mm -hmm. long. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think right now if you go to the grocery store in Quebec, you'll see some local produce, but only vegetable, uh, sorry, only uh, root crops. So you'll see some carrots, you'll see some rutabagas, you'll see some potatoes, but you won't see any fresh vegetables. So that's the part that we really wanted to develop here at the farm so that in the winter you could get um, a complete vegetable offer. So you wouldn't have to buy California lettuce. You could buy some mesclar from your local farmer. And that's why we develop all our uh, greenhouse crops that are really only greens, but really diff diversified greens so that it's really exciting to uh, buy this produce. You're, it's not, um, you're not sad looking at this produce. You get really a, a huge diversity that you don't need to buy anything else, don't need to buy any imported produce uh, when you have access to, to these vegetables. But the problem is right now is that we're only at the beginning of winter farming and it's not, um, like if you go to the grocery store, you'll probably won't find any local uh, winter vegetables. So we need more farmers to start doing this so that uh, the offer grows and it's more accessible for, for everyone. So really the revolution is just beginning. Yes, yeah, just to start, but now we have the unfair information on how to do this and it really works. So we only have to continue, but I'm sure it will work. Oh, and that's exactly why you wrote the book yeah. <laughs> for JM, isn't it? Yeah, we wanted to share the results of our work here. And also we, why we wrote the book actually is that we saw how much success we had with growing vegetables in the winter. And we wanted to share the techniques that we have on this farm so that people could start at the level we're at now and not have to do all the work to get to that level. So we're all starting at the same level and we're pushing it further from that point. So that was the goal with the book. Thank okay. you. So these are the spinach that we transplanted a week too late in October. And what we saw is that they didn't grow at all. So the light was just too low for their growth. Oh, wow. So we just transplanted it and they stayed at the same stage. And now we're in December and they didn't grow at all. 
but my take is that they'll be the first one to produce in the spring. So I think this is not loss, but if you do all your greenhouses with uh, dates that are too late in the fall, the problem is that you won't be harvesting until next February. So you'll have a hole in your harvest and that's not what you want when you're doing year round farming. You want always to be harvesting and selling. So you need to make sure that you have the right dates for that. And this is uh, a week too late in the fall. But since it's going to grow in the spring, what I'm hearing is that winter farming is also a way of spring season extension. Yeah, so you, these vegetables that are already in the ground will definitely be the first one to be ready in the spring. So if you want to be extra early at market, you can plant in the fall and, and harvest these vegetables in April and May for your first market. So definitely a good way to, have, to be really early at market and differentiate yourself from, your, uh, from the other farmers. And I'll show you the ones that were transplanted at the right date. Okay. I can show you this snow. Yeah. So these structures are cold tunnels, so they're permanent tunnels and they are much more sturdy than caterpillar tunnels. They can hold more snow. So that's why you can grow in them all winter long. Uh, and it's what differentiates these from the caterpillar tunnels. But what you see all that snow, we will need to remove it for two reasons. The first one is that you want the light to get inside the structure. Right now the snow is covering all the plastic so you don't get light for your plant growth. And the other reason is that the uh, snow weight can make the structure collapse if it grows too much. Right now it's not that dangerous, but it could become scary. So we'll see if we shovel it, but maybe not. Woo! Oh, Do you have that? <laughs> that's winter farming, yeah. folks. <laughs> Much better. Yeah, so these um, spinach were transplanted at the right date in October. And now we harvested on them yesterday. So the, we took out all the big leaves. And we, when we harvest uh, spinach in the winter, we always harvest leaf per leaf so that you're leaving the heart of the plant and it starts to regrow again. So you're always harvesting on the same plants. And these are really nice. We have some um, drainage problems in these tunnels. So it's a bit of a challenge to grow in the winter because the water level is so high. So sometimes these spinach are not happy and they start to have yellow leaves, but these are nice. So we're really happy with it. Is that how you remove the snow? Yeah, you can start by doing that. So you get the snow down and then you shovel it on the side. Yeah. What shall we see? In, oh, what, should we go? So actually, could you quickly explain too, like this is a lower tech tunnel, so it's, it's not heated at all, right? These ones? Yeah, so this is a super simple tunnel. It's really only a greenhouse structure, but we have nothing else in it except roll-up sides and we also monitor the climate in here so that the roll-up sides are automated but there's no heat at all but these are great because what we do is we use them year round so in the summer we'll be planting things like um, tomatoes eggplants and peppers and then when the fall comes we'll be removing these crops and planting um, spinach in them which are really cold hardy and don't need any heat in the, in the winter. So we use all of our cold tunnels for spinach in the winter and we cover them with one or two row covers and that's it. So really simple technology, but works well. We've done that for many years and we always have great results with these tunnels. And basically underneath the row covers, it, it just keeps it right above frost, essentially? It gives uh, the crop, so the row cover will give two or three degrees more to the crop. And then this structure will give another two or three degrees. 
So what you get is the temperatures felt by the crop is really higher than what you have uh, outside. And also it protects the crop from outside winds and snow, which is usually the most important thing to do. So they're really happy in here and they grow from uh, October to April in this structure. And we harvest on them pretty much every week. Cool. Shall we go look at a heated greenhouse, yeah, but sure. minimally correct? I might run into the issue of fog oh, on the lens. You'll definitely run into that issue. To the viewer at home, the l fog on the lens is evidence of the temperature difference in here. <laughs> what can you tell me about what's happening here? Yeah, so this is one of our prettiest uh, greenhouse right now. So the reason why it's so nice is we planted it super early in September. So all the crops had the time to grow before the sunlight decreases too much. So we also have different uh, new crops that we're trialing this year in this greenhouse. We have in here the senposai that we started growing last year. Um, and now we harvested a lot on it this fall and we're letting it rest a little bit for the next few weeks so that it regrows well. Um, this is a really nice uh, Asian crop that you harvest leaf per leaf and make bunches with it. Uh, in here, this is a crop I never grew. This is the first time we grow it at Ferme Quatre Temps. It's called um, Chinese celery. The pink celery, right? Pink celery. So the stalk is uh, all pink and you eat it more like a, an herb than a celery. And we make small bunches of it. It's not super popular. I think people don't know about it yet, but we'll see, we're, tr we're trying it. And we have some problems with it. We have, um, I call it empty stalk. So the stalk gets empty. I'm not sure really why. I think it might be a boron deficiency, but I didn't find the root of that problem yet. So I have to look into it. And then we have the dandelion. We also started uh, growing last year. Super popular with restaurants and also um, Italians really like it. It's, a, it's in the chicory family and it really grows well in the winter, but you need to get it in the ground pretty soon. If you get it in the ground in October, it's too late. So the leaves you see here, they're super long, like almost the length of my arm which is crazy for that crop. But if, we, if you plant it in October, you'll see the length of this leaf will be half. So the reason why you need to get it in the ground super early is that you'll get a better quality of a crop. Um, most vegetables, when they grow in cold temperatures, will tend to stay uh, close to the ground. So you'll get super short vegetables. So one reason you want to go in early so you'll get a nice quality of crop like this one. This is um, Komatsuna. We also started growing this uh, crop last year. Uh, it's one of our favorite winter crops to grow because it really grows all the time. You can be harvesting on the same bed every week out of the winter. And this is a, actually a new cultivar from Johnny's Selected Seed. It's called Carlton. And it's really nicer than the other version we had last year. It's more sturdy. The other one was really fragile, so we preferred this one. Mm. I see chard, of course, more celery. So this is the um, Tokyo Bekana cabbage. We also started growing it last year. Um, I really enjoy it, but it's a bit hard to sell. I think people don't know about it yet, so they seem, it seems intimidating to buy, but it's a really nice crop to grow. Like you see, it's really, the bed is really full and it regrows without light. So that's why I, I really like to grow it. But the 
um, challenge is to be able to sell it. So you need to present it well, you need people to try it. Yeah, I think this is one that JM tried, but he, he didn't like it too much. But I think you really like it, right? Yeah, I really That's like it. Yeah. <laughs> because it, it just grows like weeds in the winter. So I really like it. And also it's easy to cook with it. It's super fresh. You, you can eat it either raw or cooked. Um, so I really like it, but I'm not sure why it's not popular yet. I think it, I just have to continue and people will start like, liking it. Consumer education. That's actually probably another big part yeah. of, well, of food sovereignty, of, of teaching people not only what can be grown in winter, but giving it to them, making them want it, right? Like, what do you yeah. think about that? The thing I see right now with most of the experience I'm doing in here is that most of the vegetables that we should be growing in the winter are vegetables that we don't know about, like the Semposai and Komatsuna I was telling you. Um, so we need to try the, growing these vegetables because they are the ones that react the best to the low light conditions we have in the winter. And then the challenge is we need to relearn what we should be eating in the winter and adapt to the vegetables that really grow well in our climate. And we kind of got uh, separate from that with uh, importing vegetables from the south. So we lost that connection to we should be eating what grows well in our climate. And I think we're getting back to that. And this. Uh, Cabbage is a really good example. We should really be eating this Chinese cabbage because it's one of the best crops to grow in winter. So we need to adapt to it and forget about imported produce, I think. And once we try them, we see that they are absolutely delicious, so we have no reason to buy imported products. Yeah, and one other question that came to my mind was, you know, I, I can see that you're not doing tomatoes and cucumbers, heat-loving crops. Yeah. And I imagine the reason for that is likely just expense, heating expense, or in yeah. more environmental, or... I think there's a lot of reason why we're not growing tomatoes uh, in our greenhouses. I think the first one is heating cost. So heating a greenhouse in uh, our climate is really expensive in the winter. And also it uses a lot of propane. Right now we're switching to electricity, so it makes more sense to be eating in the winter, but still uses a lot of energy. So that's one reason. The other one, if you want to grow tomatoes in the winter, uh, we have so little light that you need to get some grow lights inside your greenhouses, and these are super expensive. And also you're really creating an artificial environment, which we want to move away from. We really want to follow nature's processes and calendar. So that's why in the winter when we have low light and cold temperatures, we want to adapt and only grow vegetables that like to be in these conditions. And most of them are Asian crops. That's what we see from the results of our experiments. And I think the last reason is that we want to be always growing vegetables that are in season. So we want to work with our different season and vary which, which crop we're growing every season. And we don't want to be growing year-round tomatoes because it doesn't make sense to be eating them in the winter where it's not the right climate for their growth. All right, well, thank you very much, Catherine, for yeah. showing us around. Do you have any final closing thoughts on um, winter farming, food sovereignty? Um, I think my final thought is just encouraging farmers to start doing this. I think you just do a first experiment. Try growing spinach next season. And once you'll see how easy it is to do and how successful you'll be, I think you'll be really exciting by trying other things. Sorry. <laughs> All good. <laughs> All right, well, that's perfect. Yeah. Go grow some spinach, people. Yeah, see next season, the... grow some spinach. And then I think you'll be converted and you'll start being a winter market gardener for sure. We'll see you on the next one, everyone.